Good morning, kids. Uh, good morning, parents. Uh, now, in this lesson, uh, we'll study a Latvian gambit and elephant gambit. So I'm just going to introduce you to those two. <laughs> they are actually uh, very interesting. So you can try them on the chess, so chess tournaments. So let's see. Pawn goes to e4 and pawn goes to e5, knight f3. And now Latvian gambit is f5 and elephant gambit is d5, right? I don't know if you even saw those moves uh, before, right? So let's let's see what happens here. Now, pawn to f5, very sharp move, right? It's clearly attacking the pawn on e4, but at the same time, there is a problem with this diagonal, right? The black king is opening um, the diagonal h5, e8, so um, um, black has to be very careful, right? Not to not to get checkmated on that diagonal. So the best move here for white is knight e5. Knight takes the pawn on e5. There are other moves, of course, that you can play here, uh, like d4 is a very good move. All right, this is a great move. And uh, also, also you can take a pawn on e5. Right, but let's let's look at this. I'm just gonna introduce you to the basics, and then uh, maybe we study this opening in a in advanced level or or for the chess team. Now look, it's clear White is threatening to play Queen H5 check, right? Uh, so now Black plays Queen of six, and Queen H5 is not gonna work right now because because Pawn can go to G6 and Knight cannot take that. Right now, the knight is attacked. Queen is attacking the knight. Pawn goes to d4, protects the knight. Now d6. The knight has to move, and the best place is c4. Right, we don't want to go back to d3 or f3 because then this pawn will take a pawn on e4, and then we have to jump again. So c4 is a very good move. Pawn takes on e4, and uh, now we can uh, we can play move uh, knight to c3. Right, look, we are attacking a pawn on e4. Right, so queen goes to g6, protects the pawn on e4, and here we can stop. There are different opportunities for white here. White can play a move bishop to f4. White could play move f3 and try to remove this pawn from e4. And white also can play move knight e3. This is a solid move. Yes, it's blocking the bishop, but it's protecting protecting this pawn on g2 so you can continue developing your pieces and making a castle. Let's see this move. Bishop to f4. Uh, the idea is after the knight of six, the idea is uh, to, to play like this, queen d2, and then you want to make a castling to the queen side. So this is the first idea that we can learn from here, right? So white castle to queen side, black castle to king side. It is going to be a very sharp game because when you have the opposite uh, castlings, then uh, the game becomes very complicated, right? So let's go back. Let's see what other opportunities do we have. Instead of playing bishop f4, we could play a move like f3. Right? We want to we wanna capture this pawn on e4. Now let's say pawn takes on f3, queen takes. Now don't be afraid that queen can take on c2, right? That's that's not going to be good for black because bishop d3 would trap the queen right so that that pawn cannot be taken now let's say black black can continue with a move like knight f6 and bishop to d3 attacks the queen queen may offer a trade now we don't trade here we would play move like queen e3 check and bishop e7 and again a very nice 
uh, interesting game for uh, both sides, right? I, I, uh, white can make a castling, right? Very interesting. So you can try this way. If you not think, look, if someone plays this Latvian Gambit against you, if nothing, you know a little bit about, right? Um, so let's let's go back and see what other options. Uh, I remember, uh, um, yeah, long time ago when I was playing chess, <laughs> 20 years ago, <laughs> uh, you could play like the most popular move was this one, 93. And I actually played it in my own games. Um, that was that was the move, but that's an old move. You see, nowadays they don't play that move anymore. Uh, Knight ninety three is protecting the pawn on g two, and here now a white can play bishop to c four or bishop to e two. Like this is possible, bishop e two or bishop c four, and um, and make a castle. So that's another that's another option, you know, to continue development. Of course, white has a problem with this bishop on c1 okay look i gave you three options to play against the uh, latvian gambit um i hope uh, i hope you know uh better now right um, does it happen very often in kids games no right but um then again you don't want to be surprised you know someone can play that move and uh, if you want to try with the black side and surprised the other kids you can try playing f5 and and uh let's see what can happen i'm just wondering if you can look at this a little bit from the the black side right when you when you push the pawn to f5 again if you decide to play like this just be careful on this diagonal right now for instance if the kids take take on f5 then you could continue pushing the pawn like this right and when the knight goes to, and that's actually, that's very possible that because if the kids don't know this opening, they are going to capture on f5. Uh, and now just be careful that that you stop this move, that this is the biggest danger. So you have to play knight f6, stop that. And now from here, you can uh, you can continue uh, playing like pawn to d6, pawn to d5, capture this pawn on f5, and, uh, and the game um, should be, solid right so you can try let's let's see what happens you know if you if you try this latvian gambit and you win the game call me okay <laughs> okay kids bye bye i'll uh, oh no <laughs> i forgot about elephant gambit sorry <laughs> let's go back to elephant gambit wait okay this is the elephant gambit pawn to d5 now we have to learn that from the white side and then um, we'll look from the black as well. Um, okay, this is a sharp opening too. Black is uh, pushing this pawn in the center. Now, the best way to do this is to take the pawn on d5. And uh, now, if the pawn moves forward, like pawn to e4, your knight is attacked. Right, and queen e2 is a good move here. Now, look, I don't want to disturb my bishop on, on f1, but with a queen, queen e2, uh, white is attacking this pawn, and there's a good chance we are going to get that pawn for free. Now, knight goes to f6, protects the pawn, and uh, pawn to d3. You can also play knight to c3. So knight to c3 is kind of an uh, uh, old move. Uh, pawn to d3, uh, um, a new move that that it seems so. The, this this idea that I'm going to show you right now wins uh, uh, the pawn. So look, let's say queen takes on d5. And look at this move. Uh, not knight e3 uh, because there's a bishop b4 pinning and then taking your... Uh, taking your uh, um, knight, but this move, knight d2. So this is something that that you could, <laughs> if you can remember, right? Uh, because now now you are threatening to to take on uh, e4, right? So that's, that's what we want to do. And if the black continues, um, 
uh, playing, let's say, knight e6 or, you know, any other move like bishop e7, and you just take on e4, right? So, look, you take with a pawn, right? And white is a pawn up, um, and it has a better game here, right? So queen can move to uh, to h5 or maybe queen a5. Uh, so, but this is, uh, there is one other, other idea that I wanted to show you here. See, because you have this problem with the, uh, with the bishop, you cannot develop the bishop, right? But there is a cool move, queen b5, that can help you <laughs> develop this bishop. So you are offering a trade, right? This way, and then you want to develop the bishop. So if the black trades, then you are pawn up, right? This is a very cool idea, queen b5. I like this move, right? So if the black stops that, black probably has to stop that by playing bishop to c5, right? Because it cannot allow. Um, but then uh, then you could uh, continue with this move, pawn to e5, right? And you are interrupting, interrupting this uh, coordination between the queen and the bishop, and it's 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 quite solid for um, for for the white, right? So how about um, how about you remember something like this? So uh, it's important, look, not to complicate too much. You just have to know some moves, and then uh, if it happens in a real game, you have to use your own brain, you know, so to to figure out the ideas because you cannot just rely on on uh, uh, the moves you are learning uh, right from uh, the computer or uh, you know from the teachers um, it's important to have some ideas and if you remember look if you remember just this like for instance here you just remember this move queen e2 and then uh, then d3 right d3 and 92 that's good enough you don't have to remember anything else just this and you play from here you know you are going to take the pawn on e4 and um let's see if this pawn can be protected um yeah let's see what happens if the bishop goes to f5 and uh, protects the pawn then in that case you can capture Right, and if the bishop takes, you can play this move knight g5. Now, you are not winning with this move right away. Look what happens. You are threatening to take on e4. But what happens is when the queen takes on g5, you take on e4. Now, pay attention. Queen is attacked, right? Also, knight is attacking. And at the same time, there is this problem. So, what I'm saying, if you just remember something like this, it's good enough, right? And and then you think during the game. You try to find a correct moves, right? Queen e5, and here you can trade. Look, when we play check, watch this. Pawn takes. Pawn has to take. Queen cannot. Now it's important you don't trade the queens because you are going to correct the pawns, right? The pawns are doubled, so we don't want that. But you want to play move like a bishop f4, forced black to trade. And when you trade now, you have the end game, but there are two double pawns. You have the bishops here, and uh, yeah, you 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 have an advantage, and uh, this is an advantage that can become a winning game, right? So that's about this elephant gambit, right? Let me see. Um, let me see if. Um, there is um, option an option here for uh, for black. Like if you wanna if you wanna play this from a black side, um, d five, right? So if um, if pawn takes pawn, yeah. I mean maybe e four is the best move, but. Uh, Perhaps the other option, if you would want to try this with a black, maybe taking on d5, right? Um, a 93, and then uh, then I guess you could move to a5. 
and you get some uh, some kind of uh, opening like Scandinavian defense, right? Now, if you don't know what the Scandinavian defense, we'll study that later. But maybe this is an option if you want to try and play, then uh, continue playing here. Uh, anyway, this is a this is a Latvian gambit and uh, an elephant gambit. How do you practice this? Um, you could um, play with your chess teachers. Ask them. Uh, to play a game, you take a chess clock, couple of minutes, let's say 10, 15 minutes, and you practice the opening, right? Whenever you learn uh, the new opening, uh, you have to practice that because otherwise you cannot remember it. Uh, it's so easy to forget the openings, you know, you have to play them over and over. Now, one important advice, I know you are very excited about those openings, right? You want to learn now all of them, right? But that's impossible. But what you need to do is you have to take one opening at a time and play that. Play, you know, for a couple of tournaments. And then, then you, if you want to learn another opening, you, you switch and, uh, and play another opening. Okay, kids. See you. See you in our next lesson. Bye-bye.